When we talk about capital budgeting, we are referring to the process that companies use for decision making on capital projects, which are projects with a life of a year or more. In the capital budgeting process, we will generate ideas to get different proposals, and then we'll analyze those individual proposals, and then we'll plan the capital budget, and then of course we have monitoring and pause auditing. Now, in this video, I'm going to show how capital budgeting can be done using Solver in Excel, which is a form of integer programming. And we're going to see a capital rationing problem when a company's capital is limited. So in planning the capital budget, we will organize the profitable proposals into a coordinated whole that fits the company's overall strategies and we will consider the project's timing. Now, some projects are attractive on a standalone basis, but it doesn't fit strategically as a whole. Now, if the capital budget is limited or it becomes an issue, then scheduling and prioritizing of projects is important. Now, in this scenario, we have four proposals and each of them will have four years of lives. And the cost of capital of this company is, let's say, 12%. Now, the problem here is that the projects require different capital to be invested at different time. So, of course, let's say here at year zero, which means today, proposals one, two and three requires different outflows. OK, so these negative numbers represents cash outflows and the positive numbers represents cash inflows. OK, you can think of these cash flows, let's say, in terms of millions of dollars, for example. Then these are the capital that is available to be invested at that particular time. So a concern for the company here would be to choose which proposals to select. One criterion that can be used is the net present value or NPV. The objective would be to maximize the NPV for the shareholders. But the problem is, can we do everything? Can we do all the projects? Okay, are all the NPV positive for all the proposals? Okay, so we're going to evaluate that. Right, so first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to calculate the NPV of each of these proposal. So we will take the initial cash flow in year zero, which means today, and then we will add in and using the NPV function, I will select the rate, I'll lock this in, and then I'll select the cash flow from year one onwards. So that's how the function works. Now, if you want to calculate the NPV, if you have specific dates for specific cash flows, then you can consider using the XNPV function, okay, where you can input the dates of the cash flow. But for this, I'll just use uh, the NPV function. Okay, so these are the NPVs for each project if they are implemented. So since all the NPVs are positive, we can actually uh, accept all these projects given that we have enough capital to be invested. Now, the next problem that we're gonna look at is do we have enough to invest into everything? So what are the required capital investments? Okay, so if I highlight everything with the negative sign, that will give us a total of 345, but the capital available is 400. That seems to be enough, but if you consider the capital that is available during that year, then we can't invest into everything. For example, if, uh, if I accept all proposals one, two, and three, we will need 150, okay, but I only have $120 million there. So what I need to do now is I will need to build another table. So let me just copy this over. So we have the another table for the annual capex requirements, okay, or capital requirements. Now I'm going to just take or filter through the numbers that are capital requirements. In other words, those that are in negative terms. So I'll just take if, okay, the cash flow is negative, then I'll take the absolute value of that cash flow. Else I'll just leave it blank. So with that, the capital requirements are converted into a positive numbers. So this is to highlight those where we need uh, investment or an outlay. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna create a new column here to select those projects that we will accept or reject. So I will use the integer one and zero to determine whether we accept or reject. Okay, so if I put one, it means we accept. If I put zero, it means we will reject. Okay, so this is why this is called integer linear programming problem. Right, so with that, uh, I'll calculate what is the capital required based on the projects that are selected. So let me just highlight that. Okay, so we're going to use a sum product. So I'm going to take sum product. I'm going to highlight the 
indi uh, the indicators, the flags here. Okay, I'm going to lock it in and then I'm going to select uh, the capital requirements for year zero. Okay, so if I do everything, that means I will have, uh, I will need $150 million of capital. If I were to copy this over to the right, okay, so these are the respective uh, capital in each of these years. And if you change the integer to zero, okay, then you will see the capital required changing. Now, what we need to ensure is that the capital required has to be equals to or less than the capital available within each year, and you can't exceed that. If you want to build a check, I can put a flag here to make sure that if the capital required is less than or equals to the capital available, then that meets the requirements. So I should say is yes, why, or I can say okay. Okay, and if it's not, if it's not, then I'll put N for no. You may want to use conditional formatting, okay, to let's say uh, any text that contains, uh, let's say, a Y, I'll change it to green. Okay, if the text contains, uh, let's say, a no, and I'll highlight it as light red. Okay, so I can copy this over. Now you will see that some uh, cells will indicate N if the capital required is more than the capital available. And then lastly, our objective, okay, our objective is to maximize the total NPV. At the same time, we want to stay within the capital that is available. So what's your NPV in this case? Again, we'll use a sum product of the projects that we select, multiplied to the NPV of each respective project. Okay, so this is the NPV uh, of given this current situation, okay, which is $227.44 million. Now, is this, uh, in this case, we this is not feasible because there is insufficient capital now, if I were to just do project one, okay, that is, it meets the capital requirement, but then is this really the maximum? Okay, can we do better than that? Can I do two projects? Yes, I can do that, and the NPV is higher. Can I do one, two, three? Uh, answer is no, you can't. Can I probably do everything? As we mentioned earlier, we can't do that. Maybe I will take away proposal uh, one, and we still can't meet the requirement. So this becomes a situation where we can use Solver to find the optimal solution to find out which projects we should accept and which projects we should reject. So in Solver, okay, uh, I will set the objective, which is to select cell H21, the NPV, and I want to maximize it. Okay, the objective is to maximize the NPV. And what variables are we going to change? We're going to change cells H14 to 17. Okay, these are the cells where it indicates one or zero. Now, what are the constraints here? So, a few constraints is that the capital required, okay, I'll select the capital required, must be less than or equals to the capital available. Okay, so I'm going to click add, I'm going to add another constraint. The last constraint that we need to add in here is that the variables H14 to H17 is going to be a binary. That means it's going to be one or zero. So here you can actually select BIN, bin, uh, which stands for binary, and then we we'll select OK. So this ensures that the numbers here can just be zero or one. Okay, it can't go outside the range. So uh, we are done. We can just click solve. All right, and our optimal solution here is to do pro proposal one, two, and four. Okay, so that will allow us to maximize the total NPV, and at the same time we keep within the capital that is available for us, okay, or for the company to use. So that's how Solver can be used in Excel for a capital rationing problem where we need to allocate the capital to the best use possible, which means to invest into positive NPV projects and at the same time keep within the capital budget.